Right, thank you very much, Haley Weston. I welcome into studio a whippersnapper, a fellow who's <laughs> the youngest ever councillor up there on the SDLP. Yeah. And you're the leader of the SDLP grouping on the council. That's correct. Conor McGreevy, you're most welcome in the studio. Thanks very much, Ron. Good news coming out from the House on the Hill, the red brick uh, edifice that is the council headquarters. You're, you're not spending as much on mobile phones anymore. You're giving money out to, uh, to uh, Warren Point Football Club so they can start to play their games, their home games in Warren Point. And you're giving money towards the Narrow Water Bridge. That's right. It's all good, positive news at the minute. Um, in, in terms of the expenditure, councillors, uh, you know, we, we all realise we need to lower our own costs and we need to get the money out in the community where the real work can happen and real delivery for the people. We had Jim on, Jim McCurry on the programme and he was talking with great enthusiasm about the new leisure centre out the road. That's going to be a, another jewel in the fine crown of Nurian Morn. Yeah, well, in Uri Morn, the people deserve uh, the finest leisure facilities. Uh, the leisure centre I welcome is going to start, and hopefully it'll be open there in December 2014, and people can get in and use a modern facility. The lovely thing, too, is the work has been kept in the area. Felix O'Hare got it. That's right, yeah. yeah. There was a number of local contractors in Fort Rowan, so I think the probability was high that it was going to be a local contractor and that's good because you will recall the buy local campaign that's been ongoing right. too for the that's council. Right. That's right. You're uh, the youngest councillor. Is it the youngest councillor? You're not the youngest SDLP councillor up there. And the youngest councillor up there. Up there, full yes. stop. Uh, so that right. begs me to ask you when you started in politics. Um, it's gone back a pretty yes. few years now. So but you're, how long are you in the council? 2011. Two, well, relatively yeah. new into the council. Re uh, absolutely. But the, I mean, the last it's batch. Been a, it's been a, a, a rise to stardom. You're the leader of the SDLP group. Why are you the leader of the SDLP group? Well, the SDLP is trying to reinvent itself. And I suppose the, my colleagues in the SDLP and Yuri Morn thought I'm the best man for the job. And they've put me in there and I'm trying to bring it forward, modernise what we're trying to do. Um, it's not easy. It's not an easy task, but I'm enjoying it. Youthfulize it as well. Well, it's not all about youth either. I mean, there's a lot of people um, of all ages have a lot to offer. And I mean, we're not a party that says, right, we just want the youth. We want everyone. Yeah. How do you get on with your DUP and unionist colleagues? I have a great working relationship with them all inside the chamber and outside. But I mean, when push comes to shove, how do you get on with them? Personally, I get on fantastic with them. But when political push <laughs> comes to shove, how do you get on with them? <laughs> Every matter is individual. I, I, you know, we've got to move away from the ideolo ideological blocks that we have, you know, and start thinking about a progressive, positive future for all. So that's where I am, and that's what I deal with every individual issue with all my colleagues of every party. And are you sensing that that idealistic uh, approach that you are articulating now is being reciprocated uh, from the, your political opponents? Is there a general wish that we should flower together? There is 99% of the time, yes. Um, and I think as we move forward, Roan, locally, um, and, and you get a new generation of politicians in and councillors and MLAs, etc., that you will see a more coming together uh, of everyone and ideas and, and mindsets and projects. I think that's what we have to get behind, projects and campaigns. Why did you only come to council in 2011 if you were political for as far back as you can remember? What, what put you off going into council politics of standing? I suppose there was nothing really put me off. Um, the timing was just right. I mean, I was young, I was school, uh, I went to college and you know, I went through all the cycles of normal life and I think I came in at the right time. I just turned 29 at the time, um, which, w which was good. I had a bit of life experience behind me too. I think you can't come in too young to politics and it, you can't burn you out. Also, it's important, dare I suggest, that you have, a, you have an independence. You're not depending upon your council money up there, your, your expenses and whatever. You're not depend you have a separate life. You, have, you, you are a man who runs a business and is doing it successfully. That's right. I've got my own business now going seven years, Rowan. So it's going very well, growing from strength to strength uh, every year. Um, and it's, you know, it's good I'm employing local people mm -hmm. and I suppose on the back of that I'm able to, uh, I'm the only councillor up there who's now not claiming the 65p uh, mileage rate 
I actually haven't claimed any mileage this financial year, but I've requested 45p only should I claim anything. Um, I also I don't have a council mobile and things like that there. I, I, I'm there to serve people. I'm not there to live off the people. My dear fellow, my dear Connor, if you were wearing a blue shawl, I would think you were Mother Teresa of Calcutta. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> But what's the 65p thing? What's that about? The 65p is a DOE um, recommendation for councillors because councillors do only get. Yeah, but you you take 45p. Whenever when I do you claim, claim, but yeah. I haven't claimed in five months five now. Five months. Uh, yeah. But will you hit them with a big bill, or is it? Are you? Is that just a contribution you make? I, I well, I haven't even done my marriage, so I've actually lost out. You aye, can only claim aye. three months yeah. max, so. Yeah, but it's an odd. But the, the, the mobile phone use has, has cut down. Yeah, well, I use my own mobile phone, personal yeah. mobile phone, and a number of councillors do. I should should add that a number of councillors do. But is it true that because of your green business, your business is green. Yeah. That you have got, uh, you've invented a scheme of hundreds and hundreds of individual cases and cages for carrier pigeons. And when you want to send a tweet a message, you write it and put it on the leg of the carrier pigeon <laughs> and send it off. Is that happening up at the council? No, no. I mean, th there's a lot of efficiency up there, but we're, we're having them back. We've got them laughing now. We're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure, that's what it's all about. A bit, a bit of fun yeah. in here, Ron, as yeah. you say yourself. Well, there's no point taking it too seriously no, because no. we're going to bury John McEvitt. Uh, John was a Mary Street neighbour of mine, John McEvitt, uh, the, the son of, of Owen McEvitt and Lizzie McEvitt of Mary Street. They were number six Mary Street, we were number five people. And th then the widow of Rory O'Connor, the musician. Uh, they have gone, you see. She, right. she, uh, her, she has died. So people are, and my friend in Dundalk, Patter Byrne, mm -hmm. a really, really wonderful human being, Patter Byrne. Uh, we sailed together all the days of her life. Take those people in, Sean. Uh, all the days of her lives, we sailed together. We went boating together. He was a small. He's gone as well. So yeah. people are dying. So why should folk take to life too seriously? Well, that's you know? it. I mean, Ron, we're all going to pass away at some stage. Uh, actually, I noticed your own social media, Facebook, the other day. Maybe it was yesterday. Yeah. About uh, the oldest person in the world, 120, passing away. And that's right. You've realised yourself you're not going to maybe reach. I thought it was going to reach <laughs> 120. I was sure it was going to be great because yeah. I feel inside myself 120. I've just about another another five decades. To to go. Yeah. Well, it's almost three decades since I left the BBC, and I remember it as though it were yesterday. Yeah. So, but then somebody says, 120 is the oldest guy in the world. I, I'm not going to live that long, you know. No. Where are you on the things like uh, spirituality and stuff like that? Are you a religious person? I've got my own beliefs. I believe in God. Yeah, yeah. What drum beat do you march to? I suppose that's a good one. Uh, what foot do you kick with, they would ask. <laughs> the SDLP would suggest Catholic, because you're a Catholic well, party. Well, I was born. Aren't you a Catholic party for Catholic people? That's not true at all. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, I was born, <laughs> born Catholic. Um, as indeed was I. I've fallen away, maybe, as yeah. many, many people have. But that's a badge of honour. Would you want to be associated with the modern Catholic Church in Ireland? I f I'm, there's a priest that I work with in northwest Nigeria. And he, he cherishes the St. Mary's Girls High School in Yuri, who support him out there. And they have up on a, on a, a notice, uh, mm -hmm. up at St. Mary's, ca pr pride, pride in Catholic education. And he said, you could not have such a notice in yeah. the Republic of Ireland. You couldn't. It would be pulled down. That's where it's gone to there. But back yeah. to politics, of course. And uh, let us give to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. You know, that's the, that yarn. But anyway, Welcome politics, the... Uh, <laughs> Warren Point Football Club, yeah. they have to play their away matches in Ken McGuinness's back garden in Dungannon. Steinmore Park, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. How are, you, how are you able to help them? Well, uh, the club have come to councillors uh, over the last couple of months during the pre-season um, saying, look, this is unsustainable. We're going to have to travel to Dungannon, uh, 40, 50 miles away, depending on where you're coming from. And uh, you know our home support's going to drop off. People aren't going to go there, which is true. Um, it's a long old track for people. You know, it's a whole day out, and uh, they're saying the stadium doesn't meet the uh, criteria for UEFA and IFA, etc., etc. So they've presented plans that they, they need to build a new terrace, two new city stands, uh, a new um, a toilet block, a new press office facility, and things like that. And it's a council-owned facility, Milltown. I don't know where, where oh you're. Oh yes, I do. Yeah. So the council owned the ground anyway, and uh, 
thankfully, there was cross-party political support that we should support the club. I suppose you should. How much are you giving yeah. them? We're giving £225,000. Where are you getting it? Well, it's coming from our capital loan budget. Loan? It, because it's our own ground, it's the same as the leisure centre. We borrow You're really the investing the in your own. We're investing in our own facility for the long-term yeah. benefit that of that all the people. Yeah. I mean, Rome, the, the club and are, are doing fantastic work. Oh, clearly the, so. The, yeah. the clearly teams so. coming from right across the district to use yeah, the facility. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is too, on the back of this here, the club will be able to go forward for other loans and grants yeah. and add more value without yeah. a penny. It's a building economy. It, it really is. And you're the seed corn. Absolutely. Yeah. Start I understand it. this. I understand this. It's, it's like a startup company. Yeah. It needs a wee bit of capital to start and then it grows. Yeah. And this is what's happening. Yes, we've come in a couple of times, um, same way the investor and I, we come into the company five years, ten years down the line, there's a few more pounds to take it to the next level. This has yeah. taken one point town to the next level well for done. the community. So it's a great news story. Talk, I'll talk to you now about the bridge. You, you just, I don't want you to put you in any difficult situation, but I'm going to ask you. Yes, New Orleans Morning Council is giving a couple of million, a million and a half. It's all known exactly the full amount of money. Is that um, sort of that kind of area? Roughly, roughly. probably. There's still Louth, things that happen. Who messed up in the first place? How much are they giving? Probably around the same. Around the same. Uh, the Irish government, you, you, you managed to buttonhole Enda Kenny at Paddy McAleese's funeral and say, Enda, we want money from you. And how much are they going to give? Well, three? I think I should four? say, Rowan, there was conversations, as I said, last time I was sitting here, there was conversations ongoing beforehand, and at a funeral, it's not the right place to do any type of business like that. But I, I take your point that you're saying I wasn't there, I was on no. holidays. But yes, hopefully he's bringing seven million euro to the table. Seven? Hopefully. Wow. We're, now, we've got to get that. Part of the difficulty for him, isn't it? What he has got to sell, for God's sake. There's people 13 years on a waiting list for disability help yeah. in the Republic's health service. He, he's got a big sell down there, but you're confident he can do it. I am. Mm. I mean, I also am disappointed to read in one of today's uh, daily papers that uh, Simon Hamilton has basically said, no, the doors are shut. I mean, the executive, but no, that executive has something to do they've here. Said that, they've said that from the beginning. They have, yeah. And that's, you know, I'm disappointed, yes, but you're not surprised. Not surprised, but again, we'll go back to what the bridge uh, symbolises. It yeah, is... Dare I say, seed corn, the same as the football thing. Yes. You put the money in the bridge, the thing begins to flower. We can start building the product. Yeah. People can say, oh, it's never going to happen. It's, it's into a backwater and all in the middle of the coolies and there's nothing there. At the end of the day, we're trying to build something. We have to have a vision, a long-term vision. So whenever you reach 120, you'll <laughs> see the fruits of it. <laughs> I, shall, I shall walk on my hands across the bridge when I'm 120. Listen, th and there is a private, there is a private element too. Someone, well, someone who is going to come in and give, uh, give, uh, give a, a kind of few million of a. That's the hope. Uh, I said that last time. Yeah. Ron, that's still conversations that are going on. And we're going to have a bridge. Yep. Well, we want it. Yeah, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. That's good. That's Connor McGreevy coming very shortly. My police friends from the press office. Uh, maybe that's not quite the right thing, but there's a constable here in full uniform. And a, a lovely looking woman as well. And I'm assuming she's the press off, whatever. You're not allowed to make comments. That's politically incorrect, isn't it? <laughs> Constable, well, you're a lovely woman. That's a, Stop going to arrest you, now, not me. I get taken away. <laughs> Sean, what sort of music have we got to play Conor McGreevy? Enya. Enya would be lovely. Orinoco Flow. Oh, cool underneath the bridge, baby. Very good. You go well. Take Thanks care. Lovely to see you. You're Thank most you. welcome.